for nothing. All the toys in the world were his. All the paints, all the books, papers, pens, all the seats. So, the Pillow Man uh, is the story of a writer um, who lives in a totalitarian state and he writes these stories that are uh, a little bit gruesome and often involve the murders of children. Um, and in his town, there have been some very striking similarities between some child murders in real life and his stories. So he's been brought in by the police, and it's the byplay between these two detectives and Katurin, my character, um, and interrogating and Katurin and eventually piecing together what's kind of going on, why, why they want him here, because he doesn't realize what's going on. So in, in this play, there's two or three very long, like three pages of dialogue where basically it's just me talking. And like, from a technical point of view, yes, it's very hard to memorize those lines, but it's also hard to keep that interesting. It, it's hard to make it so that it actually has a point because with story monologues, yes, you're just telling a story, but you still have to make it interesting. You still have to make it mean something. And probably one of my favorite moments, but probably one of the most difficult ones is the Little Green Pig story. It, it's this moment where I'm telling this story, but it has a completely different meaning to me. And trying to embody those two things, kind of like a double speak is very difficult, but um, yeah, no, I'm really enjoying it, even though it's such a hard part of this play. So I think that Katurian has changed in, like, really one major way, is that the way I was playing him originally was a lot, like when I first started with the script, started working with uh, Allison and with um, Colin and Kelly, with their characters, is that it was very flat. It was very much just a very nervous character, not sure of who, who he was, what, what he was really doing there. Now, he's changed into a much more dynamic and richer and fuller character. He's not just this nervous wreck who's kind of a fool, a bumbling fool. He's very intelligent, he's very strong, and he has a lot of darkness in him. So to kind of get in the right frame of mind and to really begin to feel my character, embody my character. I, I have a couple of different techniques, but what I do is I put together an imaginary set of circumstances, them being this play, um, and kind of try and find bits of the character in my own life and people in my own life that I can apply to. I have a sister as well, so a lot of the time when I'm talking very lovingly to Michelle and embodying my sister Nina because that's a real person that I can very easily tap into and emotionally connect to. Drawing on those past experiences and also imaginary ones all kind of blend together to create this idea of like though I'm talking to Michelle I'm really feeling the feelings I would if it were actually my sister. So that really helps helps with the interaction between the different characters. And as, as for myself and as in general, <laughs> I myself am a very nervous person. So tapping into that is very, very easy because I see a lot of myself in the character. And so <laughs> it's stuff like that that helps me really make the character more believable because it's, it's, it's I'm just living it. I'm, I'm not acting, I'm, I'm playing, I'm being.